Director Parr, if you would, I, I want to read you an abbreviated question, and I'd like then introduce your uh, your staff members you have with you, and then the floor will be yours. But we're asking uh, all the directors that if their budget did have an increase, uh, would you could you please present to the council how your additional funding will improve uh, the services to the to the citizens of Nashville. The floor uh, Mr. is yours. Oh, Mr. Chair, uh, our budget is a no increase budget, so we're not asking for any additional um, budget. And uh, to my, my left, we have uh, Heidi Weigel, who works in finance with us, John Honeysucker, who I'm sure you all know quite well, and um, Jim Snyder, who works in administration as well. And to my right is Tony Newmeyer, our chief financial officer. And uh, my remarks hopefully will be really brief because on um, O&M, for the water and sewer department, we're looking at a flat budget request. Um, we can operate, I think, with the, uh, the same operating budget that we did last year and um, operate efficiently with that. From a water quality perspective, the, uh, all our indicators are good. We don't have any issues that I need to report to the council on um, deliverable, the, ab the, avail the ability to deliver water or the qu quality of it. And on the uh, wastewater side, we're having a really good year on permit compliance. And on stormwater, we're requesting the same budget this year as last, um, and that's exclusively due to the fact that our revenues should be within a couple of thousand dollars of this year's revenue and last year's revenue. So our budget uh, presentation is pretty uh, basic, and that's all I have, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I'll open the floor up to council members. Vice Chair Weiner. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate it. Scott, thank you for being here. I wanted to preface my remarks by saying I really appreciate the opportunity to have spent a week embedded in water services and, and get extensive firsthand look at the process and what exactly goes into all the facets of water. And, and I encourage all the other council members to take the opportunity to take that tour. I'm sure Mr. Honeysucker would be glad and Mr. Kennedy would be glad to oblige. Um, having said that, one of the things that I asked when I was there was what the cost and the time required would be to fix all of the projects that we have on our plate currently. And you were kind enough to share some of that, and I think in the interest of, of brevity, I have just pinpointed a, cu a couple of questions that I wanted to bring out that I think would be important for everybody to understand the scope of what goes on. So how many total stormwater service requests are there? There are, <coughs> excuse me, uh, 1,474. And of those, how many are prepped and ready to go? In the five-year plan, we have 160 projects that will be conducted that will address 250 service requests. So we have 250 total service requests, and by completing 160 projects, we satisfy multiple that are potentially right near each other? Yes, ma'am. Okay. How much is that going to cost? The, uh, the five-year capital plan is $10 million per year. And we budget for $45 million over the course of the five-year period just to make sure we have con contingency funds available. So $45 million um, over the five-year period. So in the next few months, how many capital projects do you foresee? Over the next few months, excuse me? How many smaller capital projects do you oh, foresee? Um, the C projects that Casey Cooper manages, we'll, we'll do around 30 projects per quarter. So we'll knock out 35 C projects, the small stormwater projects per quarter, so about 120 per year. Okay, and by smaller, you're talking how much in dollars ballpark? Around 10,000 or less. Okay, and then let's talk for just a second about the larger capital projects. Mm -hmm. um, how many probable long-term projects do you see and how much? Well, um, we have, in addition to the five-year plan, we have 303 projects that are in the pre-design phase, essentially we're identifying the, the ability to do the job. And those will address 485 projects, and the estimated cost on that is $113 million. So if I do my math right, that leaves us about 954 service requests that we still have to evaluate. Yes, ma'am. How do we do that? One at a time, and I'm not being facetious. No, I know. Um, we, we try each, each year on the capital planning process, we look at the entire five-year plan to make sure that it makes sense for the next five years. So it's a, it's a rolling five-year plan. 
Um, like you said earlier, we try to group as many service requests as we can into one project. That way we're not solving one project, we're not solving one service request with one project because a lot of times there will be several, several service requests in one geographic region. So we redo that to make sure that the projects we've allocated make the most sense. Okay, that's a lot of projects. How long do you think it'll take for us to review all of those and, and put some clarity or you know, rate the level of engagement with each one? Um, unfortunately, in the stormwater program nationally, the service requests are not gonna stop. So it's gonna be difficult to knock down that number dramatically. Um, the 1,474 represents 50, 75 years of work that um, we weren't able to do because there wasn't a dedicated stormwater program. So we are coming from a position of um, a, a large demand. So it's a literal statement for us that additional revenue will result in additional projects. Um, but there is a balance there somewhere between how much money is available and how many projects you can do. So I'm going to assume the wear and tear development, you know, new development that's coming in town and, and obviously money are obstacles to getting these things completed. Um, can you just share how we got here since 2002? Um, not sure I understand. Just in terms of we had that backlog and oh, we yeah. rated them A, B, and C. Right. And the, uh, the program was put into place in 2002 and the stormwater fee was put into place in 2007. Is that right, Rich? Yeah, 2009, I'm sorry, 2009. So we've been in a position of catching up ever since 2009. The good news is I think the projects we've done have made a dent. We've been successful with the projects we've done. It's just that our topography is um, very hilly and a lot of rock, um, a lot of ditches. One of the things I, I tell folks is when you drive home from a, the council meeting tonight is visualize all the ditches that you're going down, um, all the times you go across a, a culvert, that's a, um, a corrugated metal pipe that was put in when that sub subdivision was developed. So all that stuff is um, deteriorating over time and it's gonna have to be replaced. So it's, a, it's an enormous system. One of the things that's unique about us is that we're the third largest stormwater system in America because we have 262 square miles of um, stormwater infrastructure. You know, it's hard to visualize a ditch as, an, as a piece of infrastructure, but it certainly is, especially when it's not there. So all that infrastructure has to be maintained. Okay, so what factors, when we're talking about rating a project, what factors do the engineers use generally? Because I know some of it has to be their engineering judgment. Mm -hmm. But what criteria generally go into weighting those projects A, B, or C? The, uh, the fundamental one is life safety, and that goes back to home buyouts. So if there is a home in the flood way or the flood plain, that is the that will take the highest precedence. And the only way to solve that problem is to get rid of the problem. So we have an aggressive home buyout program. And I think as many dollars as the council can provide us to do that, will it'll solve two problems. Number one, the people won't need to be rescued. And number two, the people won't need to go rescue them. So we're not putting our own people in harm's way and we're permanently eliminating a potential stormwater problem. It also creates green space and in, improves the ability to filter um, the rainwater when it hits the ground. Um, probably lost my train of thought. Where was I going? Well, oh yeah. The, the, second, um, the second criteria is property damage. So if, if someone's home is at risk, then that takes the next level after life safety. And then we look at public infrastructure. So if a road is being damaged or a bridge is being damaged, it's, it's not in the city's interest or our citizens' interest for a piece of metro infrastructure to damage a piece of metro infrastructure. So we try to correct that third. So it's life safety, property, in a home, and then metro infrastructure. How does the funding look for the home buyout program? Um, well, we're bringing to y'all next week um, a package on the Gibson Creek watershed. And um, we have a really good working relationship with, with TEMA. And we're really good at getting the funding when it's available. 
Um, if you look at our, our track record relative to our peer cities across Tennessee, we've gotten a lion's share because I've got literally the, the state expert, Stan Robinson, working for us. He knows how to do it, and he's really good at it. So um, if there's money available, we'll go get it. And like I said, if the council can provide additional funding, we have a list ready to go that we can go approach the citizens and offer to buy their home out. One of the things that's important to note is it is voluntary. You know, we're not going to go and take grandma's house and make her move out. It's, um, it's completely voluntary. So you'll be able to give us an idea of what that cost would be? Um, yes, ma'am. We, we could get that one really, really accurately using property tax records. That would help. That would help. And then lastly, would you provide us with a dollar figure that if we had to fix it all, how much would that be? Well, I mean, right now, the 1,474 is 113 million, but the problem is that we have 954 that isn't in that 113. Right. So, you know, a good number to start, if you took a snapshot today, is $250 million. And then that doesn't include the one that comes in tomorrow, because we'll get a service request in tomorrow. And so now we know why it takes so long when we get a service request to have to get in the hopper and get it done. It's a lot of work. Um, but like I said, I think we're doing a good job with the revenue we have to, to solve long-standing problems that, are in, that have been in the city. We've got projects that have, um, the home buyouts have been extremely successful. But we have some, some heavy civil engineering projects that have solved some real problems. That's all I have, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Glover. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Potter, one thing that is, is occurring in my district, and I know Mr. Jamison forwarded an email to me, uh, it's happening in some other districts. We have some older communities, um, condominium communities, that did not have individual water meters on them. Mm -hmm. I know that we've been doing, you know, Mr. Kennedy's been working with me. And it's not in your budget now, but it's something I think that we're probably going to have to look at, that we start evaluating that, because unfortunately, I think we may be reaching the end of a, of a period, and it may start creating some emergencies. So I think it falls in line with what Council Lady Wiener was talking about, about things that we know under stormwater. I think these are things that we know that are going to fall under water services. I don't know what the cost is today. Uh, I think, though, budgetarily, we need to start looking at it on how do we um, how do we identify the number of products uh, projects that could potentially be out there, and then how are we going to physically uh, solve the, the the issue? And I know that, that, that nobody has the answer today, but I, I certainly, uh, as we're going through this budget process, see you working with this. It's something though that I I, I just feel like is going to become a major problem and one that financially we as a city are going to have to try to figure out going forward. Sir, I, I agree with you completely. Um, one of the things that we have the ability to do is to fix stuff really fast. And um, maybe that's an option for some of the communities, but it's, uh, it's going to take specific legislation. Yeah. And, and I'd love to work with you all on that because there are some problems out there that are lingering and yeah. they're not going to get fixed. So someone has to do something. We're willing to do it. it it's just a... It's a legislative issue. And well, I know we're meeting Wednesday, and maybe um, John and, and we, maybe we could spend two or three minutes on that issue. Thank yes, you, Chair. Sir. Councilman Anthony Davis. Thank you, Chair. Scott, thanks for being here and, and always putting together a really well thought budget. Uh, first, I just want to compliment your team. Um, I just, we can't go without saying that. You have some amazing people you work with. And I work with the most awesome people in the world. They, they are there for us every time we need them, and, and we really appreciate them. We just, I just want to make sure that, say that publicly. Um, wanted to get your thoughts on um, the new stormwater regs. What's the word on the street about how those are working and, and your take on it? Um, are you referencing the state legislation? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> I don't usually like to talk about what the state's doing, but <laughs> the, no, uh, just in general, like, okay. like since yeah. we modeled Atlanta, correct, didn't we, a couple years ago? Our stormwater management manual, I think, is state-of-the-art. I really do. Um, one of the th issues with a city is that you can't rebuild it from scratch. And one of the beautiful things about our manual is it causes no harm. And I do think it does incremental improvement, parcel by parcel by parcel. Um, we've, we've visualized that as pushing a, r a large rock up a long hill. You know, we realize we're not going to get it there, but as long as you're going up the hill on that one parcel, water quality will be improved. Um, there is conflict within the development community and us about 
you know, what is the right level of stormwater management on the quality side and the quantity side. But I think we have a good balance. And I think that's, um, especially with our city growing so quickly and the infill development that's occurring, I think it's really incumbent upon us and it's really incumbent upon Metro Water Services specifically not to cause ourselves problems we gotta fix in 10 years. So that just doesn't make any sense. So for us to be prudent, but you know, reasonable, you know, for the government we're here to help, but you gotta have a balance. And I think our management manual does a really good job of being green and also being developer friendly. Cool. Um, yeah, and I haven't heard like a lot of complaints or anything. Maybe a infill grumble here or there, but yeah, if, if that's if that's the worst I'm hearing, I just kind of wanted to get your take on it. Um, second, I just wanted to kind of get an annual update on consent decree. I tend to ask this every year: where are we on those projects, and and how are we looking to make sure we're fulfilling our obligations? I really couldn't be more proud of how that program is being led. Um, Cyrus Tuzi and Ron Taylor lead that program. We've spent a lot of money but we've also made spectacular improvements in our deliverables. Um, the consent decree hasn't been entered into the federal record yet, so the clock, so to speak, isn't, isn't running. So when the clock, when it gets entered into the register, we have 11 years to finish. But the good news is we've been working the plan as advertised from day one. So we're ahead, for want of a better word. Um, the projects that we've done, I think, have been noteworthy and perfect example is Weiss Creek pump station um, the, the pump station that fed Weiss Creek treatment plant before that plant that pump station went online it overflowed when it rained an inch and a half um, and that's horrible to Weiss Creek and to um, the Bordeaux region since that pump station came online we've had no overflows and um, it was 35 million dollars but it was a project that met the consent decree requirements and it, um, it succeeds in um, its goal. Like the stormwater system, a wastewater system is operating in a very corrosive environment, so the problems are going to always manifest as the days pass. But I do think, especially compared to our peer cities, we're in really good position. Um, we're not introducing a significant health risk to the environment. On the other hand, we do have overflow still, and we have maple trees, we have grease balls, you know, we have broken pipes, and we'll never get to a position where we don't have overflows, but we will always be working towards zero is our goal. Yeah, and I didn't realize the clock hadn't started ticking. I figured we were like we're not really three or four years in. We're not really out to anybody except just then, but um, it's, it's in our interest that we are able to keep doing the program. Sure, and the, the Shelby Park rehab was a, isn't that a consent decree That's that we've been working on? a consent decree project, and that, that worked really well. Yeah, and I appreciate your your staff went the extra mile. You know, we, we had a if we had a contractor issue here and there or something, your staff was there to, to help me work through it and work with the neighborhood. So again, I appreciate everything and thanks for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you, Councilman Davis. I want to remind council members that this is strictly about operational budget. I wish you would have added something about financing in that question. Council Lady Gilmore. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate your staff as well. They're very diligent and are always very helpful. I did have a question um, about the stormwater funds from 2016 to 2017 with the repairs and maintenance. I see that it goes from like 1.171 uh, million to 5.1 million. And I was wondering if you could articulate what the big jump was in that. And then I had two other questions after that. Um, there's a $4 million transfer into the stormwater fund that's from a fund balance. If you look at the stormwater fee from 2009 when we implemented it, we weren't able to spend exactly our budget every year because you can't land right on the number every year. So we always end up a little bit short. All that money went into a fund balance that we can use for debt service going forward. So that's that transfer. So we have borrowed the money to do the capital projects and we have debt service to pay on that and the fund balance is, is paying towards that debt service. Okay, thank you. And then I had uh, one, I really had two more questions. And then I guess I guess you kind of answered it indirectly because when I was looking at the total revenues and transfers, it was almost exactly the same, but it wasn't, and that's what you just answered. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so then I had uh, one more question. And it was for the 2015 
um, operating expenses, where you realized uh, $4.948 million for the program revenue, and it was only for that year for 2015, and you don't see any for 2016, 2017, or any before that. And that's under the debt service fund. Is that what you're just talking about as well? I'm not sure, Council Lady. Can you tell me what she uh -huh, is? J65-5. It says transfer from other funds, but is is not been transferred before or after that. Um, sorry, I don't have that sheet in front of me. Can you if you can give me some more detail? Sure. Oh, okay. Okay. The short answer is I don't know. We're going to have to get back to you on that number. Um, I just don't know. All right. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Parter. Thank you. Council Lady Allen. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and Mr. Potter. Just again, I will, I will give a good shout out for the uh, stormwater infill process. I thought it was great, and I'm glad to hear that it's working well. I think it's been... Uh, a good way to not continue to add to the needs for more operations to solve new problems that we create. So I appreciate that. You, you led the effort, Council Lady. So well, <laughs> it's a group group. Um, it, with regard to stormwater fees, do you know how our stormwater fee charge compares with other cities? Are we low or high or we're low? We're low. Mm -hmm. um, so perhaps if we did a study and showed that, then we could maybe provide more funds so that we could dig into that process faster? I think that would be appropriate. And so um, I think a comprehensive look at our entire fee structure, uh, perhaps in the, in the next couple of years, is a, is a good idea. Good. Um, okay. Thank you. Councilman Bedney. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is, you, you heard me talk about this before, and we already, I already know you cannot do it. Uh, <laughs> Just for the rest, uh, I'm interested in helping uh, people that uh, have a, a affordability issues that they have ditches in their property that uh, pushes their ability to maintain them uh, and remain in those houses. Uh, now, as a city, we don't engage in, uh, your department doesn't repair our private property, but we have the Barnes Fund now that helps with affordability issues. So the question I had to ask you is, does your department has the capacity to work with the Barnes Fund if there is any need for helping a homeowner do repairs in their property? Uh, even though the money won't come from your department, the staff will come from your department. So I just wanted to know if you guys need any additional money to implement a program like that to for staffing or you can afford it. The short answer is we'll use revenue from any source as effectively as we can. Um, I just don't know the specifics about a Barnes Fund type transfer, but um, at this point, we don't get any revenue from the general fund. And I think that's, that may be charter driven. Um, I'm not certain about that, but I'd, I'd be almost sure. But um, we don't have any revenue transfer from the general fund. We have revenue transfer to the general fund. So, so the question is really, do you have staff capacity to, uh, to do additional work if it comes out that you need to work with the Barnes Fund? I mean, we can talk about details later, but this is my chance to ask if you need any more money so I can put it on the budget to give you more yes, staff. Yes, sir. We could, um, mowing ditches is would be really expensive and very labor intensive um, because if you, if you look at, if I've got a crew. Oh, I apologize. The the management part of it, not oh. the actual labor. Oh sure, I mean Casey can manage that all day. Yes, so you don't need it. Okay, that was the question. Yes, sorry, sir. sorry about the misunderstanding. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you, Director Potter. Seeing no others in the queue, want to thank you for being here. Appreciate your patience and uh, thank you again. Oh, we have a late arrival. That's Council Lady, sure. hey. Hey, Wood. Thank you so much. Um, and I do apologize. That's I had right. a previous engagement. I just didn't see your... Uh, I know. But I just wanted to um, give a shout out to 
the water department, storm water. Um, it's been one of the departments that has really embraced, I'm sure most of us, but me in particular, mm -hmm. as a new council person, and I'm just delighted in whatever your needs are, I would like to come on board and um, stand in support of whatever they are. And I, again, I know I'm late, and I would like to give a double shout out to Mr. Jeff and, um, and boy, I, Jim. I don't know how to say Jeff. You look at the Jeff. Oh. <laughs> and John Honeysucker. We went on a um, tour, a process tour, tour with Mr. Lee. Leoncio, Leoncio. The nicest person in the whole world. The nicest person beyond the whole world. And he took us through the process, and I think uh, Mr. Honeysucker set that up. And that was so meaningful to me. I can't, I don't even have the words to express it. So I would just like to give a shout out. I don't know how that was initiated, but John, I really appreciate that. And Jim, I just thank you all, all just the best. Thank you for your service. Thank you. Um, Ms. Gilmore, I think that your question, I think that is the debt service transfer into the stormwater fund. Oh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Again, Director Potter, thank you for being here and um, appreciate your uh, presentation. Thank you.